Hi, I'm Christy. I'm the children's librarian here at Pierre Marquette District Library in Clare, Michigan. And today I would like to talk about... Picture books. I know what you may be thinking. Picture books are meant for children. Why should I care about them? But picture books are actually designed for all kinds of people. When you think about the dynamic of reading a picture book, there's usually an adult reading a book to a child. So there's two people involved. And most authors are going to write just as much for the adult as they are for the child. With that in mind, I would like to present my top eight favorite picture books. Number eight, Home by Carson Ellis. So this author, who if you've ever heard of the band The Decemberist, does a lot of artwork for them and really is just all about the art, which I think is just amazing. So if we open it up, we can just see these beautiful pictures of different kinds of homes. I just think it's enjoyable to look at the artwork of this book oh, and just kind of enjoy it as a piece of art. Number seven. Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sindak. It's been a book that most of you have probably grown up with or a lot of you probably remember and I grew up with it as well and have always really liked it. There's a movie based on it which is really takes the, a simple idea from a picture book and makes it more complicated. I think it's one of the best picture book to movie movies that I've ever seen. This book is also really cool for the illustrations. Maurice Sindak is an awesome illustrator who uh, before he started writing books on his own, did a lot of artwork for other authors. Number six, Guess Again by Mac Burnett. So the story is all of these little clues about what something is gonna be. So like, for example, we have a picture of what looks like a rabbit and a little rhyme that says, he steals carrots from the neighbor's yard. His hair is soft. His teeth are hard. His floppy ears are long and funny. Can you guess it? That's right, my. And then of course, it's not a bunny. It's Grandpa Ned. It's just kind of a funny book that plays on the idea that kids love to kind of guess what's coming next. And I think it does a really good job of encouraging kids to guess, but also surprising them. Um, I just think when I read this book, kids get a real kick out of it. And it's teaching them to be actively engaged and to be making predictions about what's coming next in a book. Number five. Dr. Seuss in general, but the book I have here is Yertle the Turtle. So Yertle wants to be the king of all that he sees. So he's stacking his subjects, these other turtles, right one on top of each other like that. Um, so that he can see further and be the king of all of it. And it's kind of just a story about greed and selfishness and what happens when somebody gets too much power. I've got lots of nostalgia and warm fuzzies in my heart for Dr. Seuss just because it's something I grew up with. I can remember my parents reading it to me at night. And it's always nice to go back to a story like that and reread it. Number four. I've got two for this one, Little P and Spoon. Both of them are stories by Amy Krauss Rosenthal, who's one of my favorites. Little P is the story of a pea who just wants to eat his vegetables, but he has to eat candy. So it's kind of a subversive tale about getting kids to eat their supper. My favorite is Little P's expression when he has to eat the candy. And of course, the end of the story is that he gets to eat his dessert, which is spinach. Spoon is another kind of inanimate object tale about a spoon who is really enjoying his life but then at some point kind of feels like it might be more fun to be chopsticks or to be a knife um, and it's just kind of this story about being yourself and realizing that it's kind of fun to be a spoon or so spoon things. Number three, City Dog Country Frog by Mo Willems. Mo Willems does a lot of awesome children's stories and I definitely recommend if you're looking for a fun author to start reading children's book wise, check out Mo Willems. This book is a little different from his other stuff which are mostly kind of funny. 
This book is a little more sad, but I really love it. It's the story of a dog and a frog, and the dog is from the city, he comes to the country, and Country Frog kind of is showing him what life in the country is like. Instead of being a regular Mo Willems story and being kind of funny and lighthearted, this one kind of tackles issues of grief and what's it like when you lose a friend, either because it, they died or maybe that you just moved away or whatever. It's about feeling the loss of that person and then being able to move on and pass all of the things that they taught you to someone else. I think it's a great story for kids, but also a really good one for adults and one that I think you can enjoy no matter what your age is. Number two, Flossie and the Fox by Patricia C. McKissack. I really love retellings of old fairy tales, but this is really one of my favorites from that kind of genre of children's books. It really twists the original story of Little Red Riding Hood, which is be afraid of wolves, be afraid of men, warnings to little girls. Instead, the story is about Flossie and how she outsmarts the fox. And Flossie is pretty awesome. She is quick-witted and her interactions with the fox are quite funny. Flossie is the hero of this story. She's the one who outsmarts the fox. She doesn't need anyone else to do it. It's just a really exciting tale that takes a classic white male privileged fairy tale and makes it into something that's really relatable and is teaching little girls that they're smart and that they can handle themselves in the world and they can be the hero of their own stories. Number one, This Is Not My Hat by John Clausen. I love everything about this story. When I think of picture books written for adults, this is the book I think of. Not only are the illustrations just beautiful, but it also has kind of a, a cryptic or double meaning message that's exciting to see kids get and is also kind of just funny for adults as well. This is a really simple story about a little fish who's stolen a hat from a big fish. But that fish was sleeping and he probably won't wake up for a long time. And he probably won't notice that his hat is gone. And even if he does notice, he's not gonna know it's the little fish that took it, right? So this, as you can kind of see from those illustrations, is a story that tells, the words are telling a different message than the pictures are. And it's kind of up to interpretation what happens, um, but it's really awesome to read to a child and see them kind of try and figure out like, Oh no, that big fish does know what's going to happen, and he does know who took his hat, and he's coming for the little fish. It's just kind of a funny story. It's got like a little bit of a dark humor to it, because you kind of think that the big fish is going to eat the little fish. But does it really well, does it in a way that's enjoyable for both kids and parents, and I think teaches kids something about not trusting the narrator of a story, that the narrator is different from the author of the story, and that there's something going on besides what the narrator is telling you. So, thanks for watching. I'd love to see in the comments what your guys' favorite children's books are and what you love to read children's books-wise. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.